On the island of Anglesey, in North Wales, live three women who fear for the future of their community. Really, this is the first time in our story that we haven't got people behind us. I think we're the first generation of sisters for a long time who have had to sort of prepare our demise, if you like. Miranda is one of only three remaining nuns left on the island. Christ, son of the living God, have mercy on us. You are coming into the world. Christ, son of the living God, have mercy on us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Christ, son of the living God, have mercy on us. Tuesday, 2nd of July, 1907, the Feast of the Visitation. It must have been the strangest sight for those passing by at the time. Six alien figures, dressed from head to toe in long black robes, standing uncertainly outside Hollyhead Station and speaking together in a tongue far removed from either Welsh or English. In 1907, following the anti-religious laws of the French state, the sisters of the Bon Sauveur came to Hollyhead seeking to establish a new home and a new convent school. I'm Miranda Richards and I'm a missionary sister of the gospel here in Hollyhead. Well, I'm a past pupil of the convent, so I would have come to the convent as a child, and I stayed until I was 16. And then I entered the convent at 17. I suppose the the conviction that I had uh, a calling to, to religious life was something that began very, very slowly. Because at some point I decided that I would pray quietly for a quarter of an hour a day, um, it was in that time of prayer that the conviction came that God was calling me to religious life. In 1975, at the age of 25, Sister Miranda became the headmistress of the Bon Sauveur Convent School. Byddwch chi yn bresonol yn hirreithu weithiau yn ados da chi deulu eich hunan a phlant. Byddai. I was like, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to I was asked, would I become headmistress? I was one of the younger sisters with a degree. Um, I suppose that was the reason. Because I didn't have very many years' experience as a teacher. So I was. Um, I was quite a green headmistress. We were allowed up to the roof to skate, you know, uh, after the evening meal, sort of in the winter, we'd be skating around there in the dark. Um, the little ones in the, in the, um, the junior dormitory would hear the, the wheels going up above their heads, keeping them awake. I'm Alison Maudsley and I am a carer. I went to St Mary's Primary School until I came to the convent for my secondary education. In Hollyhead at the time, 
um, there weren't as many people from overseas, whereas in our school there was links with uh, obviously France, with it being Le Bon Sauveur convent. So we had uh, people from France, people from Spain, uh, girls from Brazil, uh, some boarders, uh, girls who were linked with the RAF Valley, so they boarded here, and girls from Nigeria. So it was really interesting. Sister Richards, she was my head teacher. I remember her being an excellent teacher, excellent French teacher. And so I suppose I didn't think about it then, but looking back how, uh, you know, at a very young age, she was running a huge school um, and maintaining a huge building. So, you know, very talented lady. In 1983, the convent school closed due to a decline in the recruitment of young nun teachers. Well, yes, you, maybe more so when you're young, I don't know, you expect the status quo just to go on and on, that, that this way of life will just continue. There was always something that was wanting and eventually it was the maintenance of the building which was the straw that broke the, the camel's back. After the closure of the school, the sisters moved to the community house next door, where they saw the buildings fall into disrepair. It became vandalised and that was painful, you know. Um, it got very grim. There we were, a few sort of women living in this house and then the building next door being vandalised. We were forever calling the police and so forth and having windows boarded up and um, somebody set a fire in the, in the building. And, and it was sad to see it deteriorating. By the time we moved to our present house, there were only five of us. Um, some of the sisters had died, some had gone to Ireland. Um, so there were only five, and we have been three now for several years. Today, the wider Catholic Church on Anglesey is facing a similar problem. However, the sisters are still pursuing their mission in a changing church 60 years after taking their vows. My name is Francis Murray and I'm a Catholic priest. These three sisters, in their own different ways, with their own different talents, are fantastic, they really are. Now I know they won't mind me saying they're getting on in years, and they are. And any other, any other person in the family would be retired at this stage, putting their feet up, but they're not. Up until 2013, there were three priests on Anglesey. And one was in Amlok, living there. One was in Bomaris, one was in Hollyhead. But in 2013, one of the priests was, was moved to another ministry somewhere else. And there was only the two of us. And we didn't really know what to do to begin with. Well, loving Lord, as we travel through Advent, let us truly prepare ourselves for your son's coming. It was decided that the sisters would support priests in helping carry out some of the services where parishioners would otherwise go without. I think any parish um, or local church that has a group of religious sisters 
I think that the, the parish is blessed by having them. And we certainly are on Anglesey. They're out there visiting homes, driving people to Bispedi Gwyneth. People from the boat that are stranded or going to the boat or from the boat to Ireland and back. Active in the St. Vincent de Paul Society, which where money is used to help people in difficult situations. You know, they're steeped in prayer and their whole life is for God and just for the community, not just the church community, but the local community wherever there's need. I often refer to them rather irreverently as my, my big sister, my mother and my granny that I'm living next door to. But I say that with reverence and respect though because they really are, no, I got on, I, I'm very fond of them, very, they're, they're wonderful people, but they're such an asset to the, uh, the people of this area. And, and those who know them know just how valuable they are for us here. They are an amazing bunch of people and who have had to evolve over the years so much from how the role of nuns were before to now. So I am full of admiration. That's my class and the Christmas plays. The older sisters used to talk about another donkey who used to pull the lawnmower. Oh, yes. <laughs> and he had to wear shoes. Oh. <laughs> Donkey. <laughs> really, this is the first time in our story that we haven't got people behind us. I think we're the first generation of sisters for a long time who have had to sort of prepare our demise, if you like. I still have those photographs. <laughs> I have to also remember this one. Remember the twins? Oh, yeah. I can't see anybody replacing us in Hollyhead. So, um, I would imagine that the convent in Hollyhead will just close down eventually and be no more. Today, the Sisters of the Bon Sauveur, now called Missionary Sisters of the Gospel, continue their work here in Wales, Ireland, France, and as far afield as Senegal and Madagascar. <laughs>